Hello friends, my name is Theo and today in this very exciting Mishnu Media tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how to create a cool glitch type effect inside Fusion Inside Resolve 15. So the first thing we're going to need to do is I'm going to drop some footage into a Fusion clip. So we've got this guy, it's got some color on it, so I'm just going to make it into a compound clip. So we save this, so glitch color and go over to our Fusion and now we're good to go. So. What this glitch effect is going to be, it's going to be um, little pockets of chromatic aberration showing up in different parts of the image. So the first thing we're going to do is make our chromatic aberration effect that we're going to drive. So there is a chromatic aberration effect, but that is no fun. We're going to make our own because, you know, learning is learning's cool. So the first thing we're going to do is create a channel boolean and what this channel boolean will do is let us split out our separate color channels so this is basically like making a splitter node inside the color page so we're going to have our red channel copy to red and then green we're going to have black and blue we're also going to have black so now this is our red channel and we will control c and control v and control v again I'm going to hold down the Alt key and click on this connection, and that'll make a little router node. And now we can pipe these in nice and easy. Now this one will be our green, so red is black, green is green, and blue is still black. So if we check this guy, yep, that's our green channel. And then blue, red is black, and blue is blue. Nice. And you see, it's not just tinting our image, it's actual, actual factual channels, which is nice. So now we need to combine these back together again. So we're going to create some more channel booleans. C H A N, channel boolean. And shift drag this in line. Put it there. And then drag this guy over to our foreground. And now we're going to change our operation from copy to add. And control C, control V. Drop this guy in there, and now we are back to our original image. So you see, the left is our original, and the right is our combined. So, you know, nothing's changed so far, which is nice. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is add in some transforms to move these channels around to give us our aberration. So, control space, X, XF, transform. And now you can see if we just move this guy a little bit, we're getting that cool effect. And, you know, you can just leave it there. And that's cool enough already. But we're going to do a lot more stuff that may or may not make it better. So we'll add two more transform nodes. Control C, Control V, Shift, Drag. And Control V, Shift, Drag. Excellent. So now we've got our three transform nodes, one for each color channel. Looking very cool. The next thing we're going to do is mask out these transforms so they're only being affected by part of the image which will give us more of that organic glitchy type effect so you can drive this with your media in which will be cool let's you sort of drive things from the original image or you can use a random sort of displaced texture otherwise i think it's cool to just drive it from the image this was the original idea and then i realized that this is probably cooler all right so what we're going to do here is first add a color curves and we're going to use this to just really bump up the contrast on this image so if we view this We'll basically threshold this bad boy a little bit. And we can always come back and change this. So this will never be seen. This is just going to be a map. Then we will pipe this into a transform node. And this, we're going to have it move around some. Or actually what might be cooler is using a displace node. And I'm not... You could normally use just the displacement node for this other stuff. This is how you do it in After Effects. But the way this displace node works, it's not as sharp as the one in After Effects. I don't know how to make it sharp. So I'm just going to try this out. And that's pretty cool. I think that will work. All right. So yeah, that should be a good like distorting. Yeah, that'll be cool. That'll be a little bit data mashy which I'm into. All right, and now after our displace, I will add a quick little bitmap and pipe this in. And this will be able to act as a mask for our transform down here. And right now, if we look at our bitmap, it's all white. And that's because we want to change the channel from alpha 
to something like luminance or red would probably be even better since this is our red channel. And now you can see if we change our transform a bit, it's still sort of giving us all the same thing. So we will go to our color curves and we will just really contrast this up a lot. And now you can see we're just sort of getting chromatic aberration at these distorty edges, which is very cool. So now we can just either pipe everything from the same bitmap or what's even cooler is using two more bitmaps and having them each a separate channel. So this one is red. We'll make this one blue and we'll make this one green and we will pipe stuff in and down and in and down. Now if we move each of these just a little bit, maybe we'll have this one move on the Y. Let's see what this one looks like. Yeah, very cool. Have this one maybe scale a little bit. So now, if we play through, you can see that we have some sort of a glitchy texture, which is already pretty neat. But what if it moved around some? Because this is pretty staticky, as it's coming from our original image here. Well, we can move it around super easy by setting a transform right here. And we'll have it move around a bit. So the first thing I'm going to do just preemptively is change our edge to duplicate and then right click on center, modify with, I'm going to use perturb, which this will wiggle it around a bunch, which will be cool. So actually I'm going to change duplicate to mirror is what I meant. All right, so if we go over to our modifier tab and double click on perturb, if you're familiar with After Effects, this is a lot like the wiggle expression. I'm going to change the scale down to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and that will just sort of stay in this spot. And if we just play through this part, you see it's moving pretty smoothly. Let's turn this guy off and we'll just view our color curves. You can see it's it's wiggling a little bit, but it's not like glitchy or jerky. It's pretty smooth, which we don't want. So go back to our modifiers. I'm going to change this scale up a little bit, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, just so we have a little bit more going on. Now if you see, you know, that's not, not super what we're going for. So we can do instead, you know, you could put wiggle parameters on these, but that's too much work. What we'll do instead is add an expression to our random seed. So if I go to, because if you see, if we click and drag on this, it jumps around just like we'd want it to. So I can just click in here, hit the equal sign, enter, and it brings up an expression. And we can just type time in here. And then each frame will get a new seed. If we play through it now, that's a much more glitchy effect. We might bump this back down to 0 0.15, 0 0.15. And yeah. That's pretty neat. And then you could animate the strength on and off too. There's all sorts of cool things you can do with this. So, call that good. Let's go back and view our media out. And now we get this real glitchy effect. Ooh, that is terrible to look at. The left side. So you can see, oh, that's very cool. We get this really cool, it's not, it's the image being distorted by itself. So it sort of acts like a little bit more of how images actually glitch. The sort of around edges and on corners and stuff. So I think that's very cool. You can, of course, make it more or less as much as you want. We can even, since nodes are just the best. We could merge it with the original one. So this guy is the background. I mean, now we're just playing around, just FYI. So if you want to leave, you can. Another cool thing this is good for is text. So if the text is in the beginning, you can do that cool glitchy title effect people like. And it's cool to animate things on and off. So here we get this. We could apply mode. Difference. Nice. So I, that's just cool in general. I'm into that. So this is just our glitch effect. And then we can use this with another merge. And 
and we'll put this in and we'll hit control T to switch it so the glitch is in the foreground and now we can um, do something like screen over top and in between these we can add a curves and make them way stronger so now they're really looking glitchy so I'm I'm into that I think that looks very glitchy and if you want more you can always come back to your curves and you can make it less contrasty gosh darn fusion is fun so now we have way more glitching going on let's let that render real quick all right so there's that and you can of course make this all into one macro which is very cool uh if you don't know how to do that just watch my macro tutorial it's pretty easy you can elevate whatever parameters you want gosh darn this was fun all right anyway so i hope you like this little tutorial Finally got to get a little more in-depth, had some extra time for these 15 days of Resolve 15 tutorials, which if you didn't know about, you can go over to mustamedia.com slash products and type in the code Resolve15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order, which is a pretty good deal. We very rarely have sales, so go check it out there. Also, be sure to subscribe to the Mist Media YouTube channel. Leave a like and a comment. Those are always appreciated. And if you can't do anything, then just go treat yourself. You know, go get a hamburger. I won't blame you. Sometimes you just can't afford to like a video, no matter how free it is. So, once again, I've been Theo with Mies New Media. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.